Okay, let's get started with this Monday wrap up. Once again, Happy New Year's uh, to everybody. I hope everyone's ready for a fantastic 2014. Again, we have so many exciting things happening this week and, and this year. Uh, there's just a lot of good stuff coming. So, so be ready for that. Uh, much to come, but let's talk about what we have coming up this week. There definitely is a lot of stuff. First off, we have kind of a ton of news, like kind of a ton of news. Uh, and so, so what we have coming up, uh, starting off here, we have some Australian trade balance, which is in just uh, about 20 minutes. So keep an eye on that. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then coming into tomorrow, you can see we've got some trade balance for the U.S., Canada. We've got a little Euro news. Um, and uh, so there, there's enough to, you know, make things exciting tomorrow. Wednesday, we have the good old ADP. We have FOMC meeting minutes. These are always big. Australian retail sales, always good to look at. Housing starts, always good uh, uh, ones to keep an eye on. Uh, going into Thursday, we've got some pretty good news. Uh, interest rates for UK and Europe. So the ECB press conference, always a big deal, and that will be uh, this Thursday. So we can count on some pretty humongous crazy activity out of any Euro pairs uh, on Thursday. So that's a big deal. And then we top it all off Friday with uh, NFP. We've got uh, employment numbers for Canada and for the U.S. So it's going to be a busy week as far as news goes. So just kind of be ready for all of that and um, and let me know how that all goes. Uh, and we'll just be watching and ready and waiting. Okay, so just a quick look here. Um, we have got a few things to look at. Um, and hold on here. There we go. Um, euro dollar is kind of uh, the, the, the euro dollar has been doing nothing super exciting in my book for several weeks. I've been saying that the euro dollar is kind of it's it, it's kind of dead to me a little bit. You know, I'm just kind of like eh, euro dollar, nothing nothing really great there. And I still think that there's nothing really great on the euro dollar. Uh, we did have an exciting day uh, about a week and change ago. The euro just went crazy and shot up 200 pips and came right back down all in the same day, 160 pips. And that was really exciting. And then it was followed by a bunch of nothing and then a little move and then a bunch more nothing. So the euro has has no exciting setups as far as I'm concerned. Uh, pretty nice double tops, some nice price rejection. Uh, as far as how far it is from moving averages, missed pivots are really aren't any super significant missed weekly or daily pivots. Uh, besides this one here on Friday, which isn't that exciting, that's that's a whole 60 pips away. I just honestly see nothing I'm really going to be doing on the euro dollar. So if anyone has any major questions about it, I'm happy to answer it. But but I don't I don't I don't see anything super worth trading. But I'll tell you one that is looking very exciting, and that is the pound dollar. I sent out just a little teaser chart of this on Twitter today, and I think the pound dollar is looking super excellent this coming week. Super, super excellent. One of the biggest things that I love to look at are rising and falling wedges, and we have a definite, without a doubt, major rising wedge here. Now, for anybody that's not familiar with the rising wedge, this is an official reversal pattern. So what we expect a rising wedge to do, you can see how it's kind of narrowing and narrowing and narrowing, and then it starts to break out at the end. Well, a rising wedge usually will break out and move to the downside. A falling wedge, which would be this going down, would be a reversal pattern to the upside. But with it coming up, it's a reversal pattern to the downside. Now, you can see that we have this big uh, hammerish looking candle right here. Um, that that you know makes it not super appealing to want to buy into this break or sell into this breakout, I guess. Uh, so so I'm not looking for an entry probably just yet. But we have a lot of interesting things here. Our 200 moving average hasn't been touched in a good long time on the pound dollar. Uh, we have some missed weekly pivots. If we go back here a little ways, we have a missed weekly pivot back here about 160.50. We have another missed weekly pivot back here, about 159, 10, 12 area. So, so they, 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 they look pretty good. They look pretty excellent, actually. Uh, our big missed weekly pivot from 159, uh, just above 15900 is about 800 pips away, uh, which is awesome, and I love that. Um, so here's a couple of things I'm going to be looking for. I'll try to get some pending orders on this. Um, but but I love this this rising wedge. This is a great pattern to start trading the breakouts. 
Uh, but with a, with, with a nice long wick like this uh, on a rising wedge here, we could see this run back up and maybe give us a double top up here around that 16600. That's definitely a possibility. So we have to keep an eye on that. Um, remember, I've been talking about 16700, which is the high of 2011 and kind of trading against that and doing all that stuff. So I still like that. I still think we have a good chance to trade against 16700. But again, this this big old rising wedge right here is just beautiful and this is a great entry to start getting short I know a lot of money a lot of the big money said oh buy the dips on the pound dollar buy the dips maybe maybe and it did bounce nicely off the 200 moving average here by 70 80 pips or so um, but but this all all the things that we're gonna be talking about looking at tell us that the pound dollar is is heavily into overbought territory heavily heavily into overbought territory and it's time for this thing to start making a break for it so the two kinds of entries I'm going to be looking for here on the pound dollar will be um, here here are a couple of scenarios actually so we, we we could be doing something like this right here where we um, um, where, where, where we look to get short against 163 or excuse me 16430 which is super close if it breaks this high right here I'm pretty sure we're headed for the weekly pivot and probably the daily pivot weekly pivots about 20 pips away daily pivots about 55 pips away so um, well actually there we go uh, weekly pivot is about 40 pips away excuse me and the daily pivots about 75 pips away so uh, that's from current market price but if we break that high if we break that 164.33 area we're probably headed into those so one thing that we could be looking at here I'm, I'm just gonna kinda watch price action but I would like to get short against this high here this 16600 it seems like it's a long ways away it's almost 200 pips away from current market price but if we can get short against that then I think we're gonna have a really good opportunity to start selling uh, uh, start selling around uh, you know this area up here and talking about hedging and doing a few things there so we'll, we'll discuss that um, but I'm just gonna watch it right now and if we stay below this and, and have maybe a nice little breakout on this area right here that might start to get interesting to get into you can see that we have this little there we go you can see we have this little kind of level right there. There, there. There's just this little channel, and that's about 16400 on the low side there. So we start breaking that 16400, and I'm starting to get pretty interested in, in shorting this. So just know I don't have an entry just yet, but option A would be to sell the break uh, of, of this kind of uh, uh, trend line support area and start shorting with stops just above this high. So we're looking at 35, 40 pip stops. Uh, number two, if we break this high, just looking for any kind of any kind of pattern, any kind of opportunity to short against 16600. So you know, a, a shooting star, a pin bar, or anything like that um, uh, is going to give us a reason to sell below 16600. Uh, and yes, Sim, yep, yep, that's exactly uh, uh, pennant ish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. So we got a nice little triangle there that that's worth. Uh, uh, we're worth kind of watching and looking at and so on so so we'll, we'll just kind of keep our eye on this whole area I think we've got probably a decent chance of breaking this high so I'm gonna be looking more into shorting 16500 you know somewhere in there with stops above those highs but it's all gonna depend on this little area right here so just know that on the bigger picture we're absolutely looking at this rising wedge to give us a selling opportunity I just think that we might get a double top it would be a little bit I don't know it might be a little bit weird for this to just head straight down from here I think we have a, a better chance of you know maybe getting one more double top uh, we, we had a test up here and then an, an, a new high and it's making this move down so one more one more test of that high and we should be ready to go but we've got a pretty overbought daily chart pretty overbought uh, on daily on weekly pivots and on the moving average and all that stuff so I am looking to get hugely short pound dollar while everyone is talking about buying the dips and getting long so I'm, I'm going against the crowds here yeah they sure do yep exactly exactly so so that's pound dollar that's what I'm looking for there and I'll keep you guys absolutely posted on what we have uh, coming up on that but we're just gonna hold on for a minute we don't have an entry I'm not gonna post an entry just yet and we'll see where this thing goes Aussie dollar has been interesting. Speaking of rising and falling wedges, uh, hey Gustavo, nice to see you. Great to see you. Welcome back. Happy New Year to you. Um, 
so so speaking of everything here we have this fantastic uh, falling wedge right here on the Aussie dollar so so we have all these missed remember we have all these missed uh, weekly and daily pivot points weekly pivots all the way down there's at least two left still uh, yeah so there, there's still two missed weekly pivots right now um, and so we've got all that in the works and this this little falling wedge broke out and it's kind of creating this little bottom here now I don't know if the the Aussie dollar is ready to make a big move yet we have big missed weekly pivots up there and some things happening um, and so so we'll keep an eye on that I'm ultimately looking to probably buy against 8820 so if we get a little bit closer you can see that right now we're about one about 140 pips from 8820 from the from the low and the bottom here so if we can get another dip and I can buy against that level I'm gonna do it uh, and I'll of course let you guys know about all of that and we'll we'll attack it together and so on but I think that's gonna be good when we look at the Fibonacci levels here 9043 is the 23 percent fib from high to low so we're gonna keep an eye on that but uh, but again this is this is kind of against all odds you know we have the RBA saying you know the Aussie dollar needs to be at 85 and that they'll intervene if they have to and so on and so forth and blah 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 so anyway uh, again I like to kind of you know go for it when we can um, and and yeah so as far as this Aussie dollar goes this isn't this isn't a great uh, flag pattern uh, it's it's an okay one it's an okay bullish flag here on the one hour chart um, but it's kind of gotten messy in this area here so I'm not necessarily gonna look at this as a, as a big flag I mean there's a trend line there to be watched and so on but but again this is a pretty messy you know it's just been going for a while retracing for a while and and uh, you know as we made that high then we made some more highs and pulled back and it's 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 just it's not my favorite so I'd be really careful on trading this as a bullish flag um, so what we're definitely looking for though is a nice little pullback and an opportunity to buy that dip and we're gonna buy the heck out of that dip if we uh, if we get the chance so keep an eye on that we'll be looking at that Aussie yen huge mess I, I want nothing to do with anything going on here yet but it is starting to look a little interesting we'll talk about that as the week goes on uh, pound yen is kind of interesting one thing I like about the pound yen and and all the yen pairs for that matter is number one all of them have gone like a year without touching the moving average on the on the uh, on the weekly chart and that can only go so long um, and maybe it's got more to go but I'm, I'm starting to think that that we're we're now officially <clears throat> excuse me approaching overbought area on these yen pairs and they need to at least pull back a little bit uh, it looks like we're starting to work on some you know some slight reversals and so on We've got a little missed weekly pivot up here remember the pound yen has got uh, we have a missed weekly pivot here which is about almost 200 pips away we have another missed weekly pivot pivot here which is about 785 pips away um, do we have any more uh, did, we, did we hit that guy that's that's been taken out I think yeah that's been so we've got two missed weekly pivots you know pretty good stuff for a nice little pullback one thing that I'm looking for in this pound dollar or in this pound yen is that it's kind of within the zone here and so we have this missed weekly pivot that's at about 169.30 area and uh, that's gonna probably meet the 200 moving average so I would love to see this thing come down and test this and so what I'm gonna be looking for is we have a missed weekly pivot up here well not missed it just hasn't been hit yet nice little double bottom and a few things here so I'm gonna be looking in this zone between the, the daily and the weekly pivot somewhere between 170 uh, 172.50 and 17300. I'm going to be looking to get short to target 169.30. So again, I'll have pending orders on that, but but I'm going to look and see if this can come up and touch that weekly pivot, maybe even the daily pivot, and then short off of there and and target this 169.30, which should be a perfect overlap of the 200 moving average and the missed weekly pivot. It's super super overbought on on pretty much you know all the time frames that that matter anyways. Uh, the, the four hour and the and the daily charts are super overbought so this thing's ready for a go so we'll have some orders on the pound yen coming pretty much the exact same setup on the euro yen uh, very overbought on the on the uh, on the daily chart here and uh, I haven't good grief I haven't updated this guy in a little while 
Um, so, so I'm going to be looking uh, for opportunities to to uh, sell this as well, and just target this little missed weekly pivot. This is around one. The the, the weekly pivot's around 140.65. We'll we'll probably target 140.80 somewhere in there. You know, just the 200 moving average. Again, we have a missed uh, daily pivot from Friday, and then we have the weekly pivot that hasn't been hit yet. So, and this overlaps the 200 moving average nicely. That's good resistance. So somewhere around 140.300, we'll probably be looking to short. Euro yen and target that that uh, missed weekly pivot down there. So that's kind of what I'm looking for uh, on all those pairs. Uh, there's nothing else too crazy that I'm looking at just yet. Uh, we've got a lot to watch for on this uh, on this Euro Aussie. This thing has been bouncing all over the place, but uh, but the Euro Aussie is playing out very 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 nicely. Uh, we're looking to uh, throw another position on here any moment, and we'll see where this thing goes. But we have a perfect double top here. I'll keep you guys posted on all of this. Uh, from the high to low, we've crossed the 23% FIB. We've got the 38% down here at 149.90. This is all looking very, very excellent uh, for more positions, adding more positions onto this one. So it's bouncing off the 200 moving average. It's doing a little bit of action right there. Uh, our rising wedge broke, it came back up, double topped, and it's coming back down. So we're looking for opportunities to short the Euro Aussie once again uh, for a minimum target of 150, but I think we can start getting down into uh, some of these bigger missed weekly pivots here of uh, 146 and, and even, you know, eventually we're going to hit this one as well, which is 142 and change, but, but at least 146. Uh, is starting to get you know really in our face. So so I'm liking the Euro Aussie. I'll have more notes, more details about this. I will uh, um, I, I will let you guys all know about adding on the Euro Aussie and entries on the pound dollar, pound yen, Euro yen, and I'm going to update the notes and everything and just have everything posted. But th this is kind of a look of what we're going to be doing. I don't think we're going to have entry opportunities for several hours on most of these setups that I'm talking about. Could be tomorrow morning. Probably will be tomorrow morning. Um, so it'll be super important to be here tomorrow morning, but I will be watching things tonight, seeing how they go, where they go, you know, all of that stuff. And then, um, and then we will take it from there. But, but we have some excellent setups on pound dollar, uh, good setups on Aussie dollar. I like that. Great setups on pound yen, Euro yen and Euro Aussie. So it's going to be super exciting, super great. Um, and I will update the notes and let you guys know on all of that, but it's a big week with lots of super good stuff coming. So we should be able to, to, to squeeze some pretty massive profits out of the markets this week. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. I'm going to get this webinar uh, recording posted and sent out, and I will answer any questions you have, any comments, anything you want to look at. Just let me know. Thanks, everyone.